Welcome back to Vuln Vibes, ready for another deep dive. Today we're looking at a data set that's uh, causing a bit of a stir. Alien TXT base. Right. 23 billion with a B. Stolen records, supposedly. Now, we know you guys, our listeners, are all security pros. So we're not going to waste time with the whole, you know, OMG, that's a huge number thing. Instead, let's um, let's break down what this data set actually means, and maybe more importantly, what it tells us about where cybercrime is headed. Yeah, the interesting thing right off the bat with Alien TXT Base is it's not from some single massive breach. It looks like it's uh, it's more of a collection. Data pulled over time, bit by bit, by different info stealer malware. We're talking Redline, Raccoon, that sort of thing. Exactly. So what we're seeing here is uh, a very persistent, methodical approach to stealing data, something everyone should be aware of. Okay, so to put some numbers on it, we're talking 23 billion rows, 493 million unique website and email pairs, and impacting, wait for it, 284 million unique emails. But before we get carried away, we need to address the elephant in the room. You mean the fact that a lot of people are questioning whether this data set is even legit? Exactly. Yeah, there's definitely some skepticism floating around. I mean, the data seller chose to distribute this through Telegram, which, you know, is already raising some eyebrows. And just the sheer size of it, as impressive as it sounds, could also mean they've padded it out thrown in a bunch of old recycled entries from previous breaches to make it seem more valuable. Right. It's a classic tactic to pump up the price. So if you got a have I been pound notification about alien TXT base might be a false alarm. <laughs> but here's the question. Even if some or even a lot of it is fake, does that mean it's not a threat? That's the million dollar question. Because even if a tiny fraction of those credentials are real, well, that's still a gold mine for attackers. We're talking credential stuffing, password spraying, even a small hit rate can do a lot of damage. And the fact that it was distributed through Telegram, well, that says something too, right? I mean, yeah, it might be on the way out, but Telegram is still a major player in this world. Absolutely. And this actually leads us to a pretty important trend we're seeing. Cyber criminals diversifying their platforms. Meaning Telegram was the go-to for a while, but things are changing. Exactly. We're seeing more activity popping up on the old school hacker forums, dark web markets, you know, the places where things are a little more, shall we say, exclusive. But it's not just the underground, right? You mentioned Discord. Even X, which was Twitter, getting in on the action. Right, and that's a big deal. Moving to mainstream platforms, it lets them blend in, makes it much harder to spot them and disrupt what they're doing. Discord, I mean, think about it. Tons of gamers, private servers, encrypted chats. And a huge user base, a lot of them young, ripe for the picking. You know, while I was prepping for this deep dive, I came across something interesting. What's that? There's this uh, anecdote about a random email address that kept popping up in different Telegram groups all throughout 2024. Oh, yeah, I saw that, too. It yeah. really suggests that this data is not all fresh. You know, it's being repackaged, resold. So more evidence that a lot of alien TXT base might just be recycled for profit. So for us, the security pros out there, how do we cut through all the noise? How do we figure out what the real threat is, especially with this cybercrime landscape constantly shifting? It all comes down to understanding how attackers think, what their goals are. Because while the platform might change the basic tactics, they often stay the same. Take info stealer malware, the stuff that probably built this data set. It usually gets in through social engineering, phishing, exploiting vulnerabilities. Classic stuff. Right? And then that data gets packaged up, sold, and the cycle continues. Which brings us to the big question. Knowing how they operate, what are the best ways to defend ourselves, especially those of us dealing with sensitive data, and this, you know, constantly evolving threat landscape. Well, the good news is the basics still matter. Multi-factor authentication, MFA, it's got to be the cornerstone of any good security setup. It makes it way harder to take over an account, even if credentials are leaked. MFA, yeah, absolutely. No brainer these days. Yeah. But I'm guessing there's more to it than that especially with all these new tactics popping up. You're right, it's all about layers. So on top of MFA, we need to be pushing good password hygiene, unique, strong passwords for everything, ideally managed with the password manager. That makes sense. And it's not just about protecting the organization, it's about individuals, right? People being smart about what they do online. Exactly, and that's what leads us to another crucial area, endpoint security. Remember, InfoStealer malware like Redline and Raccoon, they go after individual devices. So having strong endpoint protection is more important than ever. Antivirus, EDR solutions, even application whitelisting to prevent any unauthorized software from running. 
So it's a holistic approach, basically, securing everything from the outside in. Pretty much. But with how sophisticated these attacks are getting, I mean, is technology enough? That's a good question. I mean, tech plays a huge role, but... It's just one piece of the puzzle. You can't forget about the human factor. Mm. Security awareness training, it's absolutely critical. Something we talk about a lot here on Vuln Vibes. User education, it's not just a box to check. It needs to be a constant thing. Exactly. And it needs to change as the threats change. Wait. We can't just focus on the old phishing emails anymore. People need to know about the dangers on Discord, on X, how to spot suspicious links, avoid dodgy downloads, and recognize social engineering even when it looks like just casual conversation. So what we're really talking about is a change in mindset, right? It's not just reacting to threats. It's about anticipating them, building that security awareness throughout an organization. You got it. We need to move away from that react to breaches mentality and start focusing on building resilience. That means constantly evaluating our security, taking proactive measures, and making security everyone's responsibility. This has been really insightful. We've gone from alien TXT base to like the whole cybercrime ecosystem. Mm. But I think we need a minute to process all of this. Stick around, we'll be right back to dive deeper into what all this means for security pros like you. Before the break, we were talking about how cyber criminals are shifting their tactics, moving on to these mainstream platforms like Discord and X, and well, that creates a whole new set of challenges for us in security. For sure. I mean, it's one thing to keep an eye on the dark web, those hacker forms, but trying to track malicious activity on platforms with like millions of users, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Mm. Yeah, that's a legitimate concern. The volume of data on these platforms is just massive, which makes those traditional monitoring techniques, well, less effective. We have to get smarter about how we approach threat intelligence in this new environment. Okay, so what's the answer? How do we monitor these platforms without getting lost in all the noise? One important strategy is using advanced analytics and threat intelligence platforms, the kind that are designed to sift through all that data and pick out patterns that might point to malicious activity. Things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, they're becoming more and more crucial in this area. So it's about using tech to stay ahead of the game. But it's not just about the tech, right? No, absolutely not. Tech is a powerful tool, but it's only as good as the people using it. That's why building a strong security culture within organizations is more important than ever. We've talked about user education before, but it seems even more critical now in this context. How do we prepare users to navigate this increasingly complex threat landscape, especially on platforms they use every day for both work and personal stuff? We have to move beyond the generic security awareness training and tailor it to the specific threats users face on these platforms. For example, on Discord, people need to understand the risks of clicking suspicious links, downloading files from sources they don't know, even within what seems like a trusted environment. They need to be aware of social engineering tactics disguised as harmless interactions, like those random messages offering free stuff or exclusive access to something. So it's about teaching users to be more cautious, more discerning in all their online interactions, no matter the platform. Exactly. We need to get rid of that click first, think later habit and encourage people to stop, think and verify. It's a combination of strong tech solutions and a security conscious user base. But for us, the security professionals, how do we stay ahead of the curve? It feels like the cybercrime landscape is constantly changing. As soon as we adapt to one trend, there's a new one. You're right, it's a constant back and forth. That's why it's so important to always be learning, to keep up with professional development. We have to stay informed about the newest attack vectors, the tools and techniques that cyber criminals are using, the new platforms they're targeting. Which brings us back to the importance of community and collaboration. We can't do this alone. Absolutely. Sharing information about new threats, attack patterns, best practices, that's critical. Platforms like VulnVibes, security conferences, industry forums, they're all valuable spaces for sharing knowledge and working together. It's about collective defense. We're stronger when we combine our knowledge and resources. Exactly. And that collaborative approach needs to extend to how we work within our own organizations. We need to break down the walls between IT departments, security teams, and the people who use the systems every day. Everyone has a part to play in building a strong security posture. It's about creating a culture where everyone is responsible for security, where everyone understands how important it is and actively works to protect the organization's data and assets. That's it. And that culture needs to start at the top. 
Leadership buy-in is crucial to make sure security is a priority and that there are enough resources to support these initiatives. That's a great point. It's not just about having the newest tech or the best security policies. It's about creating an environment where security is woven into the very fabric of the organization. Exactly. And that requires a change in how we see things. We need to stop viewing security as just a cost and start seeing it as a strategic advantage. A strong security posture can build trust with customers, protect the organization's reputation, and ultimately contribute to the bottom line. This has been a really insightful conversation. We've gone from the technical details of InfoStealer malware and data breaches to the wider implications for organizational culture and strategy. Before we wrap up, I want to circle back to Alien TXT Base for a moment. Even though there's some uncertainty surrounding the data set itself, it's been a good starting point for this discussion. Absolutely, and I think it highlights a key point. We can't afford to dismiss any potential threat, no matter how real it seems or where it pops up. We have to stay alert, be adaptable, and take a proactive approach to security. As we wrap up our deep dive into stolen data and these, uh, these evolving cybercrime tactics, I want to leave our listeners with one key takeaway. What's that? Complacency. That's the real enemy here. Whether it's a huge data set like Alien TXT Base or you know, just a simple phishing attempt, we need to take every threat seriously. I agree 100%. The cybercrime world, it's constantly changing, always on the move. We can't just sit back and relax thinking we've got it all figured out. What worked yesterday might not work tomorrow. We have to keep learning, keep adapting our security strategies. And a big part of that adaptation is realizing that the battleground itself is shifting. Exactly. We're seeing a blending of the underground and the mainstream. Cyber criminals aren't hiding in the shadows anymore. They're operating in broad daylight, using platforms like Discord and X to blend in and reach more people. So our threat monitoring, our defenses, they need to evolve too. We can't just focus on the usual suspects, those traditional cybercrime hotspots. Yeah. We have to be vigilant everywhere, even on platforms we might think are safe. And that vigilance, it takes a multi-pronged approach. It's about using technology like advanced threat intelligence platforms, strong endpoint protection, but also never forgetting about user education, awareness. Like we've said before, making users that first line of defense, that's crucial. They need the knowledge, the skills to spot and avoid threats, whether it's a phishing link in an email or a suspicious message on Discord. And that education, it can't be a one and done thing. It needs to be continuous, adapting to the changing threat landscape. So it's layered defenses, proactive monitoring, and a security conscious culture all working together. Absolutely. And we can't forget about the power of collaboration, sharing information about emerging threats, vulnerabilities, best practices within the security community. That's vital. We can accomplish a lot more when we work together, sharing our knowledge and resources. That's what Blown Vibes is all about, fostering that collaboration. Knowledge is power. And by sharing insights and experiences, we can collectively raise the bar for cybersecurity. This deep dive into Alien TXT base and the changing landscape of cybercrime, it's been truly enlightening. I hope our listeners have picked up some valuable insights they can use in their own security practices. We encourage you to keep the conversation going over on the Voln Vibes forum. Share your thoughts, your experiences, any questions you might have. Let's keep talking, keep working together to create a more secure digital world. Thanks for joining us on Bone Vibes. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and stay ahead of the curve.